Hello, welcome to another edition of Saturday Night. I'm Fekla Wilkie. Guess what? We have a distinguished publisher in the house. Uh, he's one man that has made a remarkable difference in the print media. We're speaking of none other than Dele Momodu himself. Yes, he's in the house and we'll be chatting him up much later. But first, we'll bring you entertainment tidbits. It's Saturday night. All I need you to do is sit back, relax, and keep a distance from your remote. We'll be right back. Charles Okuta, popularly known as Charlie Boy, has dragged National Mirror to court for libel. National Mirror newspaper had published a story on Charlie Boy last weekend, indicating that Charlie Boy had admitted being gay and heads of Illuminati group in Nigeria. Charlie Boy had filed a suit against National Mirror newspaper at the Lagos High Court, demanding one billion naira as compensation and a total retraction of the story. Bobby Brown is once again a married man. The R&B singer tied the knot with his longtime girlfriend, Alicia Etheridge, in Hawaii during the week. Bobby Brown and his wife got engaged in May 2012 at a show in Florida. Bobby was previously married to late singer Whitney Houston and both have a daughter, Bobby Christina. Bobby Christina, however, refused to attend the wedding. Well, that was Entertainment Tidbits. Up next is a chat with our guests. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Like I promised you earlier, Daily Momodu is in the house and join us as we welcome him formally. You're welcome to Madame. Saturday night. It's Thank a pleasure you. Meeting Good you. evening. Good evening. <laughs> well, I'm just touching your hands. I, I don't want to let go. Your hands are so soft. Oh, my God. Very nicely <laughs> done. And your nails, too. Well, it's beautiful. Uh, I think that should be the good work of a good manicure. When you go for a good manicure, then you'll have that kind of hand and your hands too very very pinkish very yeah I, lo I love to use you know light pink paints mm. after a good manicure what informed that really I, I actually learned to do this when i was working in 1986 for his royal mm. majesty the honor of about mm. the second and uh, i used to study him a lot very trendy very fashionable and uh you know, I looked at his, you know, fingers one day and I saw, you know, it's well manicured, painted, and that was it. And I, I picked it from there. And everywhere I go, people look at my fingers. Oh, you yes, know, that would be the look, first point of call. Yes, yeah, especially if I'm checking in at airports, you see, at Israel, you see all of them, they are calling them, saying, oh, come and see this man. This is so beautiful, you know. Well, so, and you, but it requires some courage because sometimes people think, oh, is he gay or something? Exactly, I was going to ask that. I was <laughs> you know, ask. Oh, but looking good is uh, universal and it is unisex. So it's not only for ladies to look good. Men, I don't like scruffy men. And we're in, in show business, you know. In showbiz, you must look good. You must look presentable. You must be charismatic. You must be charming, you, you know. So everywhere you go, you turn heads. And you attract attention. If not for this now, I'm sure you won't be looking at my fingers. I probably not yes. be looking at your fingers. I'll probably be looking at your face. But yes. now I'm looking at your fingers, yes. and I'm very soon I'll be looking at your face. <laughs> yes. <I'm laughs> and then the, to talk about your the texture, you know, most people from your time, your age yeah. bracket, they usually have this very tough. No, it's about applying cream regularly. Mm. When we were young, you know, those are the agno that we used in the villages. You know, were quite effective because they were natural products. So till today, if I'm going to buy cream, I go for natural products. Mm. All those chemicals are the things that make, you know, the palm feel so coarse, as if you are touching, you know, gravel or something. You seem to be very, very, very well grounded in the beauty business. Any plans of uh, coming up with a beauty line or something? Uh, Have you ever thought of that idea? No, no, not really, but you see, the Ovation brand normally is available for people who may want to do that. Okay, good. Before we go into ovation, let's start from the very start. Talking about your growing up. How did it all start for you? Because for the benefit of those who are just meeting you for the very first time, I mean Nigeria and diaspora, we want to know you better. How did it all start for you? Where are you from? 
Well, my father uh, hailed from a village called Yeme in in uh, Owen East local government in Edo State today. At that time, we used to call it the Midwest. But uh, he migrated from there and settled in Ilefe, where he met my mom, who is from Bogo, very close to Ilefe. And I was born in Ilefe in the year of our independence in 1960. Wow. And uh, I did practically everything in Ife my primary education, my secondary, my first degree at the University of Ife, and my second degree at Obafemi Aulo University. Wow. Yes. Uh, and uh, I also worked briefly. Uh, at the age of 22, I started teaching A-level Yoruba at the Ohio State College of Arts and Science. Uh, thereafter, I worked as a private secretary to the then Deputy Governor of Odo State, Chief Akiyamopuri and after that, I worked for the only of IFE, and then went back for my master's degree. I have a first degree in Yoruba studies, and I have a master's in literature in English. And thereafter, I came to work in Lagos, and my first job was with Concord newspapers, owned by Chief Moshud Abiola. Hmm, that's a long one. Yes. That's a very, very long one. So you're a family of um, what number? Uh, three of us. On my mom's side, I'm the only child of my mom for my dad. Mm -hmm. But my mom had two other children before me. I'm the last born. And then my father also had uh, two children before meeting my mom. Okay, so so I'm just right there in the middle. Polygamous <laughs> family? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, my mom was the only wife at home. You know, okay. so, so it wasn't the so polygamous you family. So you were bothered? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I'm not an ajebotter by... Any your, 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 your palm is saying what no. you're not saying. Your uh, palm is uh, saying it. No. Have what? you ever heard a cutlass in your life? Of course. I went to a very local primary school. My primary school was so local that it was called Local Authority Primary School, <laughs> Ifewara Road, Ileife. I'm sure you've never heard that. For before. real? <laughs> oh, yeah, for real. And from there, I went to St. John's Grammar School, Okeato. My God. So you can imagine all the local bim 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 yes. names <laughs> that I'm giving you. And I, I grew up, like I told you, in Ife, lived practically uh, the first 28 years of my life between Ife and Ondo State, and uh, came to live in Lagos for the first time in 1988. Hmm. So that's to tell you that um, I'm a homeboy, very yes, local. You're really very, very, not local, I won't call you <laughs> local guy. Yeah, no, right. And my mom, you won't believe it, couldn't speak one word of English. So I'm a self-made man. Nigeria is a very unique country. I think most Nigerians are naturally endowed. Mm -hmm. And that is why you will look at me and think I'm an Ajabata. <laughs> if you know what I went through in life, you, you wouldn't believe it. I lost my father when, when I was only 13. And I was left with my poor, unlettered woman, you know, mother. You know, and uh, she made sure that we went to school. Wow. That's a very... That's a very um, tough background you come from. But it has made you what you are today. For all you know, if you had had a different background, you'd probably be all buttered up somewhere and not even thinking of how oh, to Oh, yeah. All spoiled. Yes, all spoiled. Yes, no. yes, yes. So now, um, away from your background now, we're going to your professional life. What informed your going into um, writing? Well, I would say more of joblessness. I... I finished my master's degree and I wanted to, my dream was to be a teacher. I love to teach because I believe without teachers, we, we won't be where we are today. Uh, unfortunately, at the time I finished, there was an embargo on appointments and promotions in the university, so I couldn't get a job. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, Prince Damola Deremi, saw the frustration in me and then suggested that, why don't you, you know, go into writing. You have a first degree in Yoruba. You have a master's in English literature. It would be a good combination. I never realized that I could really write. You know, I didn't have a formal training in writing. But I read voraciously. Was there any particular reason why you went for Yoruba? The impression that people gave was that it, it was difficult to study Yoruba in the university. And, but later I realized that it was an aspect of inferiority complex. A lot of people just felt Oh, if people ask you, what are you studying? And you say, I'm studying Yoruba. Oh, it means that you are a lesser human being. And I didn't subscribe to that. And I'm happy I did it for 
nearly 20 years, I was the only Nigerian ever to have a first degree in Yoruba and a master's in literature in English. It, it was only recently that someone on Twitter said, because of me, he was also inspired to do the same thing. So he also has a first degree in Yoruba and now a master's yeah. in English literature. For years, I held that record. It was a world record, and I really enjoyed it. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, good. So now, um, you finished off, um, you started off at Concord. Yes, please. Concord uh, papers? But before okay. then, that's, I started working at Concord, but I started writing for The Guardian. I started writing for the Sunday Tribune. I was writing articles every Sunday, for example, for the Sunday Tribune. The Guardian, I was writing on the, the, the opiate page, which was very formidable at the time. It was difficult to get on that page. If at the first day my article appeared in The Guardian, I was floating on the moon. You won't believe it. To see my byline by Daily Momodo, I showed everybody. Hey, have, you, have you read Guardian today? And they were paying us only 25 Naira per article, mm. and we had to wait. I would wait for about four to be published. Then I would travel from Ife to Lagos, the Ruta House, mm. you know, to collect, you won't believe it, 100 Naira at the mm. time. I actually wanted to work at the Guardian, but I couldn't get a job. And that was how Nukabai now introduced me uh, to Mr. Louis Obi, who was the editor of African Concord magazine. And on the spot, the man agreed to employ me. I've never seen anything like it. I was looking for a job. I got there, and the man came in. Yes, my name is Zene Momodu, sir. You are Zene Momodu. You are the man with the tall pen. I thought you would be bigger than this, you know? So what do you want? What can I do for you? I said, I need a job. Are you? You need a job? No, no, no. I'll give you one right away. So can you start now? I said, no, I have to go back and tell my mom in Ife that I now have a job, you know? And that was it. That was how I got a job. You will not believe it. I've never entered anywhere with my certificate. So go and give me a job. a job. I'll just get there and they will just give it to me. God has been so, you know, my kind to me. Was. Very, very kind to me. All right, great. So how was your experience like all through your sojourn as a journalist? Oh, smooth sail. Smooth, smooth. Uh, what would you say was your biggest challenge while writing? Uh, it's, I always want to surpass myself. If I write something this week, next week I want to surpass it. And I mean, that's, that keeps me on my toes. I still write it two days. I mean, when we started Ovation, everybody told me it cannot survive six months. The quality, the level at which we entered the market, people said, no way, you can't sustain it. 16 years after, we are improving on the quality every month. Okay, now, let's go now to, because you've been talking about Ovation and I wanted it to be sequential, right? Now, let's go over to Ovation. What informed the, uh, the, the initiative? What informed it? I would say God again. It was God. Is it because I had originally wanted to do a magazine called Ovation as far back as 1991, 92. Why I left the name Ovation? Oh, well, that's another story again. Uh, I lost my job as the highest paid editor in Nigeria. I was, in 1990, I was the highest paid editor. I was working with Classic Magazine, which was... Uh, published by the late uh, May Ellen Ezekiel Mufeda Mejo. And uh, after losing my job, I wanted to do something. Naturally, most journalists will always wanted to, they, we wanted to publish. So I called, you know, uh, my housemate at the time, Pule Bakare, who is now the publisher of Encomium, and I told him I wanted to do a paper. At that time, they were publishing Fame yes. himself, uh, Fudge and Mayo uh they, 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 were, they were working on fame. And he brought us his thesaurus. And as he was going through, we were looking at different names, Glitilati, Kest, Encomium, and then we saw Ovation. You would not believe the way that word sounded. I just jumped at it. Ovation. And that was how we picked it. And we said, Ovation, loud for a purpose. And we were totally positive. We allow the readers to judge. We speak with pictures. A lot of people were, oh, you are celebrating rogues and thieves. No. In Africa, 80% of Africans are doing great things. The few 20% that are not doing good things are the ones that people remember. People don't remember that. But for Ovation, a lot of our fashion designers today, they are the Bio Joneses, they are the Bakaris, the Kosiba Creations, the Labanelas, you know, the House of, you know, uh, Rose of Sharon, all of them. 
you know, who never have featured in Hello Magazine. Ebony Magazine will not feature them. But when Ovation came, now you find people used to go to Harold's and Selfridges to buy their wedding gowns. They now patronize our own designers. The makeup artists. When you hear someone like, you know, Bank Ebeshida. When you hear about Tara. You know, we were able to celebrate them in Ovation. When you talk about event planning and you talk about, you know, Ibidu in Kudalu, you talk about, you know, uh, Funke, Buckner, and all of them. It is because now people can see the beauty of not just doing an event shabbily. So when you go into Ovation, if I every local tailor, those who cannot afford to go to the big designers now go to those local tailors. So you can imagine the kind of employment generation. Because now that is the fashion catalog. Everybody wants to do a wedding, wants to look at color combination, wants to look at fabrics, wants to look at you know jewelry, and so on and so forth. So it, it, the, the spin-off from Ovation is more than just publishing a magazine. It's a total package. Wow. You're yeah, a total package yourself. Thank I you. I must give that to you. So Ovation has <clears throat> been there for a very 16 long time. years. 16 good years. Yes. That's a very long time. Very. And you're climbing. You're still climbing. By the grace of Almighty. Yeah. So what are your projections, really? I mean, you have you have made a distinctive impact, no doubt. And p other ones are coming. Other magazines are coming. They are telling you. What plans do you have? They are not, they are not the telling game? us. They are really <laughs> running after us. And I'm very impressed because everywhere I go, uh, the other publishers tell me you inspired what we're doing today. Before nobody felt we could publish a magazine that would compete against the Ebony's, the Hello magazines, the OKs, the Tatlas, the GQs, the Esquire, you know, and so on and so forth. But Ovation came and we made quality our watchword. You will not believe it. We have been with the same printers in England now for over 12 years. The magazine printing company in Enfield, we're still there. We're one of their biggest customers in 55 years. A black publication. When Her Majesty the Queen was coming to Nigeria, we wanted to be a part of it. We tried everything. Of course, you know, government bureaucracy, it was difficult. But I was sitting in my barber's shop in Ghana when the phone rang. And the Deputy British High Commissioner at the time rang and said, Dele, we've been looking everywhere for you. I'm happy we're able to trace you. And I said, oh, Your Excellency, what can we do for you, sir? And he said, well, I have instructions from Buckingham Palace to select Ovation as the official magazine for Her Majesty's visit. I mean, for me, that was just, Pinnacle. that was it. This day was chosen as the official newspaper while Ovation was chosen as the official magazine. And what would interest you is that I was the founding editor of Leaders and Company. What became this day today? So to think that both the magazine and the newspaper have been involved in were selected by Buckingham Palace to cover the Queen's visit exclusively. And that's, that's just the story. It's magical. It's, it's almost surreal, you know, to think that that poor little boy from Ileife, mm. you know, who had to struggle to go to school, who had to wake up at 5 in the morning to go and fetch water. Yeah, because there was, yes. You mean from the water side? A river. Yes, so we had to go to a river early in the morning to fetch water. My mom had to do this and that just to keep us going. When I was in school, I had to, that's why I'm a good cook today, because when I was in school, when my mates were getting 100 naira pocket money, I couldn't get more than 5 naira. So the gap between the rich and the poor had always been there. And the only thing that would close that gap is education. So that's why today, there is no way I'll talk on this program without talking about the impact and the effect of education in my life. I don't know how my mom did it. My mom just knew. When I did my first WIAC exam, I flunked it. I had F9 mathematics, F9 chemistry, F9 biology. My mom sent me back to school. 
When I did that in 1977, then they said there was exam leakage. They seized the result. My mom sent me back again. So she never gave up on No. Me. Even when I wanted to read law and if I would not admit me to read law, my mom said, what are you going to do again now? That was when I opted. I so, think she was just, uh, she wanted you to have what she didn't have. I think it was more than that. I think it was spiritual. My mom was a very spiritual woman. She was a prayer warrior. She she prayed more than pray mantis. Mm. Oh yeah, she was always on her, on her knees mm. praying uh, till she died in 2007. My mom, if she didn't hear from me for a couple of days, she would not eat. She would just go straight into fasting. Mm. So now, um, after ovation, are there anything? Why would should we be expecting anything from the stable? Oh, naturally. I mean. Uh, we're doing quite a number of things. Seriously, you should start thinking of uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> to have a spa. Why not? <laughs> yes. Think about the beauty line. Yes, because definitely. You, you, you seem to have uh, a broad, a deep knowledge about beauty. Yeah, we, and, we uh, can fashion. we can start a Maybe finishing start school. Something. And then you pay me for the consultation. For the, thank uh, you so much <laughs> for the. Uh, okay, now um, at one time, not too long ago, you veered into politics as well. What informed that decision? I mean, I've always known uh, Dele Momodo as an entertainer. And then one day I just answered, He's, he wants to become the president of the country. You see, what people don't remember about me is that I've been in politics since 1982. I tell those who care to listen that there is nobody in politics today, active politics, who is my senior. I've been there since 1982 as a small boy. By 1983, I told you, I was private secretary to Chief Akama Borowo, the former deputy governor of Fundo State. I've known the Akinloyes, the Akinjides, the Olun lawyers, the Bolages, as a small boy. And I've been following them. You see, but what people, what, why people think I was not in politics is that I was more like a producer. When you talk about music, I was like a Don Jazzy behind a divanch. So you don't see the producers, but the producers actually do more work. more work. Because without their product, there is nothing to sell. So I've been like that, but I got tired. So I decided I would stop lamenting like Jeremiah. Seize the bulls by the horns and then get involved. And I'm happy that the quality of people who are coming up now is improve it. Okay. We, would you say that, um, let's assume by a long shot now, that probably Nigerians saw you more as an entertainer and I did, didn't really picture you as a politician, somebody who can really, really, you know, do politics well. Oh, the, you see... Because like in America, we can say Arnold Schwarzenegger, he did it. He's an actor. Oh, even beyond that, that yeah. I mean, you had uh, other people in America who had been Politics. Entertainment. Oh, what being entertainment and, and then uh, crossed over to politics. Oh yes. But you think you think Nigerians uh, probably didn't see. But I wasn't just in entertainment. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I've worked for a man like Chief Mashuda Biola. We ran his presidential campaign. You, leadership is not about politics. Leadership is about management of people and resources. When you get people who have never managed one million naira, you ask them to come and manage trillions, they will run mental. That's the situation that you. You know, we find ourselves in. So, so, so what, what, what do you say would account for the results you got eventually? I mean, no, no, no. I mean, that's just the beginning. Uh, okay. In most places, people don't just win, you know, overnight. Uh, President Kufo, John Kufo in Ghana, he contested three times before he made it. Uh, President Atamils, John Atamils, who is there now in Ghana, contested three times before he won. He was vice president under Jerry Rollins and waited eight years before he could make it. So uh, there, is, there is no big deal. And I'm not desperate. So I want to serve my nation. You're telling Nigerians like Arnold Schwarzenegger that I'll be back. Oh, definitely. So now going into your marriage. Oh, happily married to Mobolaji Ni Adaramaja from Obu State, Ijebuibo to be precise. Okay. Yes. How many kids do you have? Four boys. Four good boys. No yes, girl yet. Uh, well, their wives will become our daughters by the grace of so Almighty. No, no plans of uh, having. No, I filled my quota. I thought Nigeria <laughs> was four. <laughs> what are your last words for 
people who will look up to you because you are you are a role model, no doubt. Well, my last words are not exactly original to me. They are words I picked from the late Bashar Moshud Kachimawo Olawale Abiola. That hard work is prayer in action. Mm, that's a beautiful. What's your favorite quote? That's one of my favorite quotes. Hard work is prayer in action. Any other favorite quote? The hand of the giver is always on top. When God gives you, he must also give to others. Beautiful. It's been nice having you on the program. Thank you, my Thank sister. You so, Thank so you so much. much. I've, Thank I've you. I've been so enriched. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Yes, viewers, uh, uh, thank you so much. That's the much we have time for on Saturday night. Have a pleasant.